Let's say you want the user to be able to review an item by clicking on a link in an email to go to a page where the type of content needs to be the item that they're reviewing. Let's say you want to continue the onboarding process on the home page by using pop-ups only after the user signs up for the first time. Well, to do all of these things, we need to use URL parameters, and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. I have an in-depth video of the sign-up login logout flow if you would like me to link that in the description box below, but right now I'm just going to really quickly breeze through that. So on this button sign up, I'm going to sign the user up and set the sign up emails value equal to the email and then the password equal to the inputs passwords value. Now, after this happens, I want them to go to a page. And on this page, I'm going to add a pop up that I only want to be seen after the user logs in. So if they open this page normally, they won't see this pop-up, but right after they sign up, I want them to see it. And it's going to say, congrats for signing up. We can name this pop-up onboarding. You could see how this could be used for an onboarding process, a tutorial, something to that effect. So after we click the button and sign the user up, I then want to go to our page, new page, which is the one with the pop-up. But since I want to show the pop-up, we need to somehow communicate with that page to tell it to show the pop-up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a URL parameter. The key is going to be S and it's just going to be an arbitrary text called sign up. Now, when we go to that page, as I'll show you in a sec, in the URL over here, it will have something that looks like and s is equal to sign up. From this page, we then need to have an element called page is loaded that checks when the page is loaded, do we see that S is equal to sign up. This is going to have only one condition that's checking if our URL contains a parameter of name S whose value is equal to sign up. And if it is, then we want to show our pop-up. If we preview this just as is, this is this new page. By default, we just see a blank page with no pop-up. But now, if we first sign up, We then see this S is equal to sign up and this pop up is shown. We're going to work on adding it ourselves directly into the URL. So here I have a repeating group full of products and when I click on one I want to receive an email with a link to review the product which is a link to this page where this pop up automatically opens. Here I have a pop-up to leave a review, and then this page is of type content product so that we know which product we are referring to. Okay, let's set this up. When we click buy, I want to send an email to the current user's email. The subject is going to be leave a review and the body is just going to contain a link. If we look at this page we can see this is essentially the name of our app. This is the version, mine is not live so I need to include this version test and then this is the page name. 
I'm just going to copy this whole thing. But this is for product page. We want it for review page. So over here with the page name, I'm just going to change it to review. Now what we want to send some parameters. So this is actually a parameter that comes, it's debug mode equals true. We can make it false. And we can see this bar disappear. But what I'm more interested, interested in was the formatting of it. After the page name, we have this question mark, and then the name of the parameter, and then the value. So let's employ that same format. After the page name, let's add a question mark, and we're going to do s is equal to review. We can then go to our review page and do the same thing that we did before. When the page is loaded, we are going to check if the URL contains a parameter that's named s whose value is review. And if it does, we are going to show our pop-up. Perfect, on this page, I'm going to buy a t-shirt. We send an email to my email. And now you can check my inbox. I'm going to click on this link. It brings me here and we see our pop-up open. But if we look over here, our page does not have a product associated with it. Here we have product and then it's blank. But if we look on our actual review page, it's supposed to say the current page's product's name. So essentially the current page's product is empty because we didn't send that there. Let's go back to our product pages workflow with the email. And in addition to this, And instead of just saying review, which is an arbitrary text, I'm actually going to insert dynamic data. So we need to know which product the user clicked on, which product they bought, and that's going to be the current sales product. And then we need some sort of identifier. So I'm going to make S equal to the current sales product's unique ID. Now let's go back to our review page and when the page is loaded, we just want to check if get s from page URL is not empty, if there is some value there, and if it is, we will refresh. We will go to a page, and the page we are going to go to is actually our current page, and we are going to our current page, which is this review page, and we're going to send some data, which is actually going to be the result of a search for all of the products in the database, where the unique ID is equal to our URL parameter S. Now, the thing about unique IDs is there's only going to be one product with that ID, so we can just say first item, it'll be the only item. Once it sends that value to the page, we can then show our pop-up. Let's try this out. This time, I'm going to click on Cupcake. It will send an email, and the body is going to be this, plus the current sales product, which is Cupcakes unique ID. So essentially, we're going to see S is equal to this whole series of numbers and letters. And now we can click on this link. We see this over here. And we see a product is equal to cupcake and the option to leave a review for 
a cupcake. So I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.